Hello there. Wait, wrong character. Ah, there we go. So, Mace Windu is a badass, no question. One of the only Jedi to defeat Palpatine. Well, all the Jedi have beaten Palpatine technically. Okay, one of the only Jedi to beat Palpatine in a way that makes satisfying sense. But how did he do it? If you're anything more than a casual fan, you might have heard the word for part. Possibly. And if you're an even more dedicated Star Wars fan, you'll know it was the reason Mace was able to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dark Lord of the Sith. But what is it? How does it work? And are there any Sith who can overcome this dark side Krypton? Never fear, we here at the Fandom who meticulously research our videos. Ah, great. Liam, have you got the Source from the Cross Guard video yet? Shh, not now, Tom. Are here to bring you the rundown. Now, Disney hasn't fleshed out for part to any extreme extent, other than to say it's a lightsaber form Mace created, it feeds off of emotions, and it's the reason he defeated Sidious. You have lost. So, full disclosure, we're going to be using Legends information because it still kind of fits, and let's be honest, it's far more interesting. Also, please note that while the part is pretty fleshed out in the Legends lore, its more interesting elements are still open to a little interpretation. So if you disagree with our take, politely tell us why in the comments. If you disagree with someone else in the comments, politely tell them why. We wish for this channel to be a that guy free zone. We went into aggressive negotiations, thank you. Aggressive negotiations, what's that? Uh, well... Negotiations with a lightsaber. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, it is accurate to say Vapard is a lightsaber form. It was created by Mace to help him channel his own aggression into something more positive. It builds off of the back of Form 7 Juyo, which utilizes ferocious staccato style attacks to aggressively overpower your opponent. There's very little defense involved, you're essentially countering your opponent's offense with your own offense. It's not a form favored by most Jedi for obvious reasons, and tends to be studied by the Sith, again for obvious reasons. Vapard takes this form and refines it to its most effective moves and techniques, stripping away the more eccentric elements to perfect the practical. What you're left with is a style that, much like Mace himself, just gets to the point. Because of the stripping away of the more flashy and flowy elements, an ill-informed observer would say Vapard looks very unpolished and kind of sloppy due to the attacks not appearing interconnected to one another. This couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, the form is highly precise and focused, and purposely leveraging unpredictability with its staggered attacks and sudden changes in direction. In fact, the changes in direction and attack vector are so bloody quick, random, and unpredictable that to less skilled opponents it often felt like they were facing eight different lightsaber blades at once. So that's the lightsaber form element to it. Pretty cool, eh? But that's not what makes Vapard into Sith Kryptonite. We're still missing the more important half. The other half of the form is best described as a state of mind, or if you've played KOTOR 2, a force form. Now, this is the nitty-gritty of the part, and what makes it dark side repellent bat spray. It's also what makes the form so dangerous, not just for the unlucky Sif on the receiving end, but for the one employing it. Mace Windu, at least in Legends, was the only Jedi to ever successfully employ the part. Everyone else who studied it fell to the dark side to varying degrees of severity. For the part to truly work in its entirety, it's not just enough to learn the cutters, techniques, and blade work. You've also got to learn how to enjoy fighting, to open yourself up to the dark side, but without also giving in to the hatred and aggression that's often involved with this. When Mace fights an opponent who is channeling the dark side, he allows himself to enjoy the contest. In doing so, he opens himself up to his opponent within the Force, accepting their anger, hatred, fear, and power in the dark side and using it as a sort of amplifier to his own base power. And yes, you heard that right. Fear is an emotion Sif feel and use. All those who have power fear losing it, including dark side demigods. You'll notice I've said accept and not absorb, and that might sound like it's splitting hairs, but it's an incredibly significant distinction that determines whether or not you're one with the part, or you've regressed back to Juyo, and more often than not, allowed the dark side to corrupt you. What makes Vapard distinct from Juyo is while it utilizes aggression, the user must not allow the dark side energy to touch and corrupt them, and must stay firmly rooted in harmony with the Force. But 
Obviously, you can't do that if you're accepting and opening yourself up to your opponent's anger, fear, hatred, you know, basically skirting within a hair's breadth of the dark side, can you? Well, here's what makes Vipart so damn lethal to Sif. Mace might accept this dark power from his opponent and use it to amp himself up, but no one ever said he had to hold on to it, did they? So where does it go? Through sheer discipline and focus, Mace redirects his opponent's dark side power straight back into his opponent's face. Quite literally in Palpatine's case. Mace is pretty much playing hot potato with the dark side. This is actually why Palpatine's lightning was returned to sender when thrown at Mace's lightsaber, whereas Obi-Wan could only merely use his saber as a lightning rod to absorb Dooku's bombs. This redirecting of his opponent's own dark side power allows Mace to either quickly overpower his opponent, or, if he was vastly outmatched in the first place like was the case with Sidious, put him on a level playing field and cause the start of a chain reaction. You see, Vapard is not a static one-use trick. It's a continuous ramping loop, and it's actually the Darksider who creates this loop and their own undoing. Imagine you're a typical Sith throwing your anger, hatred, and all the other emotions you use to fuel your offense, working yourself into a whirlwind of unbridled rage and fury in pursuit of the singular goal of killing your opponent, only for your opponent to stonewall you, then add insult to injury by flinging your own fury, rage, and power back at you, while simultaneously remaining anger and corruption free. Flustered and in an ever state of blinding rage and ever mounting frustration at being unable to kill this smug mofo, are you going to? Hey, calm down, get a hold over your emotions, and begin to fight in a measured and controlled fashion. B, pour in more anger, more hatred, and fuel the fires of the dark side within you even more, and hope it eventually overpowers your opponent. If you chose A, well done, you have a keen logical mind and might stand a chance. And if you chose B, you are 99.9999999% of all Sith. If a dark side user allows Mace even a moment to get into the Vapard state of mind, the fight becomes pretty much unwinnable for them. At least when considering lightsaber duel. Now, we're not getting into an argument here about whether or not Sidious threw the fight, or Mace genuinely won. Because, spoiler alert, me and Tom disagree about it. And we'd also like to keep this roundtable discussion relevant to see if you can overcome the part. Anyway, this is why the fight was hopeless for Sidious. Even if you want to argue that he purposely threw the fight, which even I can admit as a diehard Mace One Fair and Square fan, is a possibility. It wasn't thrown because Sidious could win at any time. In fact, quite the opposite. It was thrown because it became impossible for Sidious to win once Mace got going. Imagine a universe where Anakin couldn't possibly show up. How would the fight have played out? Well, assuming Sidious couldn't cut Mace down in less than a second, Mace would have likely slipped into the Vapard mindset and brickwalled Sidious, causing Sidious to pour in more anger, more hatred, only for Mace to reflect it back into his face. If Mace keeps looping and Sidious keeps pouring, the end result can only be Sidious eventually calling upon too much dark side power for his old, frail body to handle, and he quite literally explodes with energy like a dark side filled balloon. Now we know the dark side is harmful to the living, and it takes a toll on the user. This is why Sif have glowing yellow eyes and generally look like they need to be hooked up to a life support machine. In the old lore, it was known as dark side degradation. Which leads me to logically believe that even Sif as powerful as Sidious have a finite amount of dark side energy they can embody before their physical form fails. Now, as we've stated, Mace doesn't absorb the dark side or let it touch him. All that energy is focused back to the sender. Whether or not May survives the explosion is up for debate. So that's how Vapard works. It's a tall mountain for any Sith to overcome. Not just Sith, but any dark side user that unleashes their fury like Sidious, Maul, Bane, Malgus, as powerful as they are, have little to no chance of overcoming the baddest mofo in the galaxy. Well, if they're stupid enough to try and cross blades at least. This party's over. And that concludes part one of this topic. Be sure to be on the lookout for part two where we explain which Sith we actually think can overcome the part. Definitely no argument bait there, Tom. Thanks for watching, guys.